So this is an additional attempt that I'm making to uh, make the How to Beat the Grandmaster Part 2 series come to life. And what you're looking at is a board, and I've loaded a PGN from a game that was played in the 1980s um, of, a, of myself as black versus an ex-world champion as white. I prefer not to tell who these people's names are, but um, it, it, it might become obvious over the course of time. Um, so I, I do everyone a disservice. And, um, you know, these games um, that I have, I haven't been published anywhere. So um, this is for the edification of myself, my students, and whoever wants to look at them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through this game step by step. I have less than 15 minutes to go, otherwise i got to buy a cell phone just for YouTube, and I don't really want to do that. So, um, The last uh, video I made came out to be 17 minutes. We're going to try to make this faster. Um, I scrapped that video. Uh, 17 minutes of this uh, is too much. So, This is the English opening. I'm black. These are all standard moves. Um, in the last video, I actually had Komodo open analyzing this because I had never seen it analyzed by an engine before. And mostly these are all standard moves. Everything that we're moving here and you're seeing my opponent move has been moved before. And uh, Komodo didn't consider any of them bad moves. In fact, they were number one moves for the most part. Uh, Rook to C1 was a little different than what Komodo wanted. Um, but we're moving basically standard old-fashioned book moves. Now I deviate here, as I recall, Komodo really wanted me to play Knight Takes Knight, um, but Komodo has an idea about this game that I'm, I'm really not familiar with and I'm too cowardly to play, and uh, that's because I'm not a rated you know, 3300 chess machine. His idea is at some point move G5, chase that bishop off, and so to me that looks like suicide, and uh, I won't open my king side like that. And uh, but I, my plan is to move my, my knight over to g6, chase the bishop off that way. So these are all fairly standard moves. Um, once again, um, this, this move was uh, predicted. This was the number one move, c6, even though it looks a little iffy. Um, it does give black a semi-backwards pawn on a semi-open file. Um, uh, this was a, an interesting move that Komodo didn't predict. However, when it we plugged it in, I'd like the move just fine, said it was an even game. So um, it suggested bishop takes knight, but also like my bishop to c5 afterwards. You know, computers change their mind frequently, so I prefer the two bishops. Now I get forked, and I was actually playing for this position. So Komodo wants me to move queen to e7, um, I move queen to e5. It, it had that as an alternative move. and. Uh, the, the point of moving queen to e5 in this situation is a attack the e4 knight, b a, keep a double attack on the d4 knight. You know, there's a potential pin on the e3 pawn after a capture on d4 because the bishop's loose on e2. Um, there's also a loose pawn on b, b2 uh, that you're going to say I'm going to get in this game. So he takes and I take back with the pawn and voila, I'm point eight up. And uh, somebody comes by convincing at this point, somebody who I hadn't seen in 10 years. And I hear him in the background saying, you have a one game, you know, so he shouldn't be saying things like that. He shouldn't be convincing, and uh, he can try to win the game, you know, let him try. Uh, you know, ex-world champions have a way of doing rather well in these things. So he um, retreated his knight to b3, and Komodo preferred knight to f3, as I recall. So it's not because the, the b-pawn's so loose. It's really because, as a matter of fact, um, He's uh, locking his queen in horribly. So, you know, he's, he's given himself a deficit with the queen. Of course, after I take that pawn, the queen's going to have a nice path out, which he would have anyway in, a, in another life. But he had a plan about coming over and attacking my bishop. And uh, Komodo now, for the next few moves, really wanted me to move knight to h4. And um, I guess that's some sort of fancy counterplay that allows me to retreat my queen and uh, get in some sort of working position and possibly a kingside attack. And... Uh, I wasn't ready to attack a great attacking player uh, myself that viciously, so uh, I wanted to remove my queen from the theater of potential uh, doubling of rooks and gaining of tempos, and by putting it there it does two things, guards the c5 pawn and prevents f4 because I take the e3 pawn, so to me the great potential for loss in this entire situation is He's going to move f4, then e4 with tempo and start rolling those pawns, and I really wanted to avoid that. So the next few moves you're going to see, he attempts to trade that again by covering his e-pawn. And uh, 
<coughs> Once again, I, I move queen to e7, taking away the point of contact of f4, which wouldn't allow him them to move e4 with tempo. And, you know, the, I, this would be like a Karpov-type maneuver, um, which would be, in my opinion, annoying to this kind of player. So he moves f4 anyway. Um, bishop to d7, as I recall, Komodo didn't really care for that. He wanted me to move rook to d8, attacking the bishop. And my plan is threefold. Number one, I'm driven nuts by the fact that I had disconnected rooks. And for some reason, at some point in my life, I had to connect my rooks. And that was going to be now. So I did connect the rooks. And now it becomes kind of a little waiting game to see whether or not he can remove his queen from a terrible, worthless place. And I can avoid playing a6, which is of no use whatsoever. So as soon as he removes his queen, I'm going to move that rook. That's protecting the a7 pawn as soon as he gets his queen off that file. So the, one, he, the first thing he does is attack that c pawn twice. I cover it. He moves. Now I can move the rook. Okay, so now I have a waste of time over my a pawn. And he moves back to f1. Uh, Komodo didn't like that move. It's one of the few moves he thought was uh, an inferior move. I wouldn't say it was a mistake. I mean, that he, he's not down more than one. But uh, Komodo would have preferred things like queen to c2. So... I just uh, continue to develop normally, and uh, queen to f2, and once again, Komodo wants g3 for a variety of reasons. To begin with, he wants black to play knight to h4, but he also wants to protect the f-pawn so he can advance the e-pawn, and uh, my opponent has a different plan about doing this, and his plan is probably, to, as I recall, to fianchetto that bishop and then push e4. So uh, I have the restraining move, knight uh, queen to f6, that puts pressure on the f-pawn, prevents e4 for the time being. And then, of course, he doubles, and I get an exchange out of that. So the exchange is pretty much forced at this point. <clears throat> These are all number one moves, you know, according to the engine. And now I come down here on c3 once again, a fairly accurate move and unexpected. And uh, now I'm beginning to get some penetration, and his plan of fianchettoing his bishop is beginning to go slightly awry. So uh, I'm putting pressure on the c-pawn. When he pushes, and I go to the 8th rank, which was, again, an unexpected move. And I think at this point I have a significant advantage. I'm up at least one. So I'm pressuring the c-pawn, um, and I'm trying to force an exchange of queens. And he didn't want to take the queen. Uh, the engine suggested he should. Um, and I'm, once again, I'm making accurate moves, and I'm going to go to f5 and then to d4 if I can possibly get away with it and anchor that knight in a wonderful spot. I'm in complete control of the d-file, um, and, and at this point, he dares me, he dares me to take the c-pawn. And uh, I can take the c-pawn, and if I do take the c-pawn, um, you know, I have this, this dread of losing my c6-pawn at some point in time because I want to move that knight, and I'm going to get f5 and e6 and things like that, possibly f6, and... Um, it, I'm, I'm comfortably up a pawn at this point, and I'm not sure I want to involve a lot of complications, especially since at this point he'd beaten more than half the opponents uh, and was coming back fairly quickly into the, the playing venue. So he's, he's coming around frequently. So I trade queens, and then I trade bishop for the knight. And now, as you see, even though he's a pawn down, I have a 4-2 majority on the queen side that's pretty much worthless. It can't go anywhere. And his 4-3 majority on the king side has almost a greater possibility of going somewhere. Um, since, however, our kings are somewhat in the way, his king's a little better placed. On the other hand, I'm going to get that file. And this is a, a little nuance that allowed me to hop in here because I'm going to get a check in on the 7th rank if he takes my c-pawn. And what good is that c-pawn anyway? It's doubled. so. I'm going to get a check in, and then if he interposes, he's going to lose the bishop, which he's, uh, if he was silly enough to take on c6, which he instantly saw. So he didn't take the bishop, he covered his 7th rank, and I begin to occupy the square he can never remove me from. Um, now I pushed the wrong pawn, according to Komodo, wanted me to push the a-pawn first. Um, I don't really see the, the point. Uh, he's going to go for some sort of mating threat. And uh, his moves are very accurate. They're just, uh, he's behind. So once again, b4, very accurate move. I'm going to play a5 and get a protected pass pawn. 
and uh, it's very difficult to stop a5 because I don't even need to support it. I can just come over and get it after he takes it. So uh, once again, I can sit on this. There's no mate threat. There, there would be a mate threat if he got in the d-file. Now I can get the a-pawn. He pushes again. I just simply take. And now it's becoming a little more interesting. So now I have the protected pass pawn, and that bishop is going into some sort of defensive mode. And my idea is to trade off the, the knight, my super strong knight, for his bishop. As silly as that may seem. Um, you know, rook pawn endings are kind of drawn type situations largely, but I, I have confidence that not only can I win, but I'd be very satisfied with a draw against the next world champion. So he takes, I take. Now, I think I mentioned nobody beat this person except me, so. He now goes into mating mode, and I'm able to defeat this and dissolve his pawns. So here we start with the pawn dissolving situation. These are all A moves as far as the computer is concerned. And interestingly enough, tactically, this is very solvable. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, king advances. The king advances, now he can do a variety of things. You know, he can take and I can take. And actually, I believe at this point, Komodo suggests that I can start pushing my B pawn, which I don't really feel like doing. I want to win as safely as possible. And uh, he evidently calculated that and saw that I just took the C pawn. So he checks my move. And now, of course, if he'd pushed, I would have simply taken his F pawn, my king. But he moves back and attacks my pawn. And now I very carefully dissolve the rest of his pawns. And he's perfectly welcome to check me. And I have two connected pass pawns, and the rest of this game is slightly embarrassing. For one thing, there were hundreds of spectators. There were way more spectators than people, and they were behind me at this point. I was the last game. And my opponent was staring at me, and I didn't want to look up, and I wanted to um, actually just try to crawl into a hole of void of repetition. So... Uh, it took me a while to get my act in gear here with all the chortling and talking and kibitzing and it was uh, a second or two before I actually was able to advance. See my CPU is getting rather slow because of uh, I have a poor disk write situation on this machine. This game went way further than it needed to or longer until I finally got the winning idea down. Got a little nerve to push pawn or two. And now, pretty much, um, I'm getting into a position that I've since replicated many times, and I believe he resigned about here. Yeah, he resigned in this position. So, this was the end of the game, and hopefully this uh, video is less than 15 minutes, and people can have it for, for Basari, saying it was played in the late 1980s. Uh, once again, a victory over an ex-world champion. Thank you, and goodbye.